fill in the blank. You're not getting any younger, so... Build a brand that allows you to get everything you want in life. Hey, you. Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week, I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people, just like you, who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz. Welcome back to another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. It feels good to be back, and by back, I mean back from Australia. I was there for a couple of months, uh, not months, I wish a couple of months. I was there for a couple of weeks in February. We went over there for a friend's wedding. And we spent the rest of the time in Australia just traveling around, going to some really cool places. I'm going to do a whole solo episode on my trip from Australia and what I learned in general about traveling. I was so nervous for this flight, like so nervous. And the craziest thing happened before the flight. I'll tell you all about what happened on the flight and also about some travel tips I learned from my first real long vacation out of the country. Like I've been to Europe before, I've been to Canada, Israel, places like that, but never for this amount of time and never traveling with a partner. So we'll talk all about that on the solo episode, but today's episode is an interesting topic. Love and dating. I've had a lot of different dating experts on the podcast before, but this week's guest does it a little bit differently. And why I'm excited to talk about this week's guest is because what she brings to the table is a very unique and never really heard before approach to dating. Like when I was talking to her and doing this interview, I kept thinking, oh my God, these tips are so obvious, yet nobody says it like you do. So I'm really excited to have Tracy Hits on the podcast today. She's the author of the book, Miscalculated, a dating plan so easy a teenager could do it. And what she means by that is a lot of the things we do when we date is we overcomplicate every situation and it works against us. It makes us go crazy and it makes us overthink everything. So Tracy's on the show today talking about some dating tips that actually help you treat dating as though it was business. And when I say that, you're going to be like, what? How is this good? Dating isn't business. But it's the same sort of thing as going on a job interview and how you present yourself and how you interview the other person. And while it's such an un- it sounds like an unromantic way to approach dating, I think it's fascinating and I think you're really going to take a lot out of this episode. So I can't wait for you to hear all of Tracy's amazing tips. If you like the show, you know what I'm going to ask. Leave us a review on iTunes. Rate the podcast. We're almost at 155 star reviews. So if you could make that happen, that would be great. Scroll to the bottom of your phone, click five stars, give us a review, and enjoy this episode, my friends. Today's episode is brought to you by Jen and Juice Coaching by yours truly. For the past five years, I've worked with over 100 people to help them feel, well, less stuck. Whether you're looking to change careers, start a side hustle, or just get a strategy for your life, head on over to jenglance.com slash coaching and you can find out about my one-hour coaching specials that will help you feel like you can finally cross those things off your to-do list and start whatever kind of project, life change, or dream that you have. My first question for you is one that is a little bit tough, so answer it however you want, but if you went to a party, how would you describe who you are and what you do to the people there? Well, that's a question that people definitely ask as their go-to, and so I'm used to that one. I just tell them I'm a brand strategist because it covers everything. At first glance, people are like, how can you be an author, a relationship coach, a manager for a country artist, an advocate for nonprofits, a consultant in sports industry, an event planner, all of the things. And really at the core of everything is just building a brand. So I just tell them I'm a brand strategist. Honestly, you'd be such an incredible person to meet at a party. I feel like I never meet anyone as cool as that. So... (laughs) 
start going to parties where Tracy's at because so many cool things about you. And one of the, the most awesome things is, you know, I've had people on the show before who talk about dating and give advice, but what's super awesome and different about you is that you take what you call a business-based approach to dating. So tell us all about that. Yes, so my whole background has been in sales and marketing, and I really thrived in that. I have the strategy, but I have a creative side too, and I was spending a lot of time you know, doing work, and then as I started to realize that I was going on all of these dates, that I was using a lot of that same technique um, when I was going on the dates as well, so I would make sure I had my elevator pitch together, that my packaging was together, that I looked nice, that I was going to places where single people would be, and single people like me would be, and then I was just you know, getting used to that sales pitch over and over. And I was getting used to the rejection. You know, I would make a hundred phone calls trying to sell some sports tickets and I would sell two out of those hundred. And so I realized, well, have I talked to a hundred guys this week? No. So should I have gotten more than two dates? No. So I just knew that it turned into those same kind of things. And so, yeah, I started to really get serious and put a business approach behind it, created a whole process and then tried it out for a couple of years. And then, yeah, finally landed my fiance. Hey, that's exactly what I did to land mine. I <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I went on 14 dates just because I'm the same way. I mean, as a writer and someone in the creative space, just like sales, we have to deal with rejection. But then in dating, I'd go on three dates uh, every quarter, and that would be devastating, the rejection. So... I like what you I like everything about your approach to this and I want to talk about how you advise to give people their own brand like almost like a brand when you go on a date so you mentioned the elevator pitch like what can people do to prepare for that well, just be, be observant while you're in the moment, but also do some research. Just like in sales, you go back and you find out what is it that who you are and what people think of you. And is that so what people think of you and who you think you are, are those the same? Is that your brand that you're actually putting out there? And so when you're going out there, being able to say, OK, well, this is who I want people to see me as. So those are the stories you tell. If you want them to think you're a very thoughtful person, then tell stories about how you take care of your grandma. If you want them to think you're super funny, tell a story about something that was really funny. Don't just say, I'm really thoughtful and I'm really funny. Like, show them, be that, live it, and then be able to, again, harness in who do you want to be. you got to control that and then be very purposeful about who you're putting out there. And then also on that whole, like, what do you want to look like? What are people saying? I had a, my fiance makes fun of me because I had a first date dress. Like, I went on so many dates and the compliment that I got was on this one over and over. So then I just wore that one every single time. So it's just pain and attention to what is getting people's attention and who are you within that process. I mean, I'm sorry, but you said it and it sounds so easy. It's just like every, <laughs> everything you said, I'm like, holy shit, it's obvious, but it's so not unless you hear it said the way you just said it. And you're the author of the book, Miscalculated, A Dating Plan, So Easy a Teenager Can Do It. And I believe you because just the way you put it about, okay, if you want to be seen as these things talk about those things, not just with the adjective, but with the proof. And I wish, I, I know it sounds so crazy, but I wish I had the advice of choosing one outfit and just wearing that because a huge part of preparing for the first date was going through your closet and finding the, the great thing to wear. But if you have <laughs> one thing, it's easy. So Valentine's Day is coming up. People are stressed about dating and all of that. And, you know, there's people, I know there's so many people who listen to the show who have an extensive dating life. They've tried, they failed, they tried, they failed. So you have a, a bit of a four-step process. I want to dive more into that. What does that process look like? Well, first of all, you have to be ready and know that you're ready to do that. So it's always that taking a minute and just, again, that research. Who are you? What are you trying to do? It's really hard to go somewhere if you don't know how to get there. And if you don't know where you're going, same thing. You, then how do you know how you're going to get there? So taking that time to really figure out what is it that you're trying to do? What are you ready for? And then just like everything else, just like in business and in life, if you set a goal, I know you've been talking about resolutions um, since October, and but setting a goal and knowing knowing what are you trying to go after so that all of your energy, everything you're doing is going towards that goal. So sometimes we get off on a tangent, we're like, oh, I'm going to go do this. Well, is that going to help you with what you're trying to do? So setting the goal is first and then creating that plan. So if you just 
decide, well, I'm going to, like for me, I decided, I'm just going to get on Tinder. I'm going to do this. And I had to commit to it. So I put together how often I was going to get on there, what I was going to do. Um, and I was going to get one date a month off of Tinder. And that was my goal for when I turned 40. I was like, I'm going to meet someone before I turn 41. And so I had that goal. That was my tactic. And I had to really stick to it. So, But then going, and as you're going through, being able to adjust the plan. You have to observe when you go on that first date, okay, what went, what was I right about? Why did I pick this guy? Why is this not working? What did I learn about myself? Come back and then continue to do the Tinder or whatever your tactic is, but do it differently. Do it with more information. Do it with that realization, that self-awareness and that research from that date. Don't ever just keep doing what you were doing. Always do it differently. Do it better because you've learned something about yourself in the process. And so it's then creating that plan and then, yeah, just kind of making it happen, land, land that date. And once you land the date, start it back over again. So it's again, take that minute, create your, or set your goal, create your plan and then land the date and then reevaluate to then start it over again. So it's always about how can I do it differently or how can I do it better? It's so interesting because you're like, okay, people always say, I'm going to go on, on dates this month, but then they do things to counteract that. They just sit on their couch instead, or they don't open up the dating app, or they message one person and then they give up. So it's almost like set the goal, but then what, write down your four or five things that you're really going to do to make that happen? Because I feel like that's what you do in business to set to set goals and make it happen. So are you saying do the same thing with dating, right? Yes, absolutely. And I kind of compare it to getting a job. And people ask for help with the job. Can you look at my resume? Do you know anyone who's hiring? All of those things. But for whatever reason, people are embarrassed or feel it's desperate to ask someone to set them up, to look at their profile, to take them out. Will you go out with me? Be my wing woman. Whatever it is. But ask for help, but treat it as a job interview. If you didn't get that interview, you know, sometimes you're upset about it, but you're like, oh, well, I'm just going to apply for another job. I'm going to apply for another job. and I'm going to get something that I really want. So again, we go back to that rejection, as you mentioned, it's just, you got to get over it. You have to learn from every moment and then know that something better is going to be there if you just continue on. But yeah, I have a checklist. But like you said, if it, on Friday at the end of the week, you're like, wow, I didn't, uh, I didn't go to the grocery store and smile at somebody. I didn't get on the train and talk to a stranger. I didn't get on an app. Well, then why would you meet someone? Right. Exactly. And okay, this is my other question is I remember when I was single, I did not like my annoying friends who were like, oh my God, like, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. But now that I'm the one that's not single, I don't know how to be there for my friends without being annoying. So if you're the person who's no longer single, but you want to help other people who are, because you know, they want to meet people, you know, they have goals, but they're not the best at putting things in action. What advice do you have for the married or the people in the relationships who want to help their friends it's just again going back and making sure that they know who you are and what you want so as much as you have to figure it out for yourself you have to make sure they know because I think one of the most annoying things as you I think you may have been alluding to is your friend who's married who's like oh I have the perfect person for you and you ask oh why do you think I would like it well he's single right yes <laughs> yes I'm like, what else you got but they're not they're just like they don't know you enough and it's not their wheelhouse to, to set you up but if you say because I remember one friend was trying to set me up she's like well I'm like what about that guy he seems actually like, oh he likes stupid movies he watches Dumb and Dumber all the time I was like I love Dumb and Dumber <laughs> like so she's like you do and I'm like yeah that's funny stuff so just making sure that they aren't casting someone aside because that's not the person for them that they're looking at this person through your eyes so you have to share with them what you're looking for and that's a little bit of vulnerability again where you're asking for help it seems desperate it could be embarrassing like you're putting yourself out there but if they don't know what you're looking for they can't help you find it I actually have a question from someone in the You're Not Getting in a Younger Facebook group they want to know Tracy how does one gather the courage to pursue dating again after feeling so put off by the constant asking of family why don't you have a partner yet that is a great um, question, and I will just give a shout-out to my family for never, ever doing that to me. I, <laughs> Wait, you're lucky. Really? This is like a common thing that was asked to me all the time. No, it happens to everybody in my family. I was always waiting for them to do it, but they were just they were like, okay, she's doing this, and she's happy, and we know that she wants to find someone, but we also know that you know, she's driven, and she's going to find the exact perfect person for her, and they have never once in my life, and again, I was dating for 20 years, 
and they never once said, when do you think you're going to settle down? And so that's a complete aside to just give a shout out to my family. And I think that that is that's part of it, though, is not feeling like you have to keep up with what your friends are doing or what your family is pressuring you about. When they ask me, oh, well, when are you going to settle down? I would say, well, as, you know, as soon as I get to here, this is what I'm doing in my work and this is what I'm, I'm trying to accomplish. And once I get there, I think I'll have time to, to really settle in on that and really focus in on, on dating. And so I think I, I spend a little time on that just to say, People can be influenced by others and, and what they think your timeline should be. But for the rejection, like I said, it's just doing it and just knowing to not take it personally. When I would make these phone calls and say, hey, would you like to come out and watch this sporting event? They would tell me, you suck. Why would I want to go see you guys? And I'd be like, okay, well, that was hurtful. But they, they weren't interested and you just had to move on to the next. And then you get that one person who'd be like, tell me a little bit more about your team. And I would, and, and it gets you rejuvenated. So you just have to not take it personally and know that, that those people are bringing something in to this conversation, a chip, something in their past relationship that's making them react like that. And that's not about you. And you have to know that. And again, so every conversation you have is a learning experience and you're going to get better at it every single time. I said, every time I would call, I'd be like, Oh, I don't want to do this. And now I'll call anybody. I'll talk to anyone. I used to be a shy kid who would not talk. And no one believes that because I just got so used to just not caring if something didn't work out, I would learn from it and I bet I'm going to do it better next time. I'm going to get the right person and just know that if, if that person doesn't want to talk to you, then that's okay. That They're saving you time. Yeah. You can move on to the next person. So true. I mean, it is really sales 101, especially, but now it's hard because you're selling yourself and we have emotion and we, you know, we have an ego and all of that. And that's what really overcomplicates it. And, you know, I, I think you feel the same. Like, there's nothing wrong with being single either. And I know Valentine's Day is coming up and people are listening to the show and they're hearing it from everyone, you know, a day to celebrate love and they feel like it's a day where they just want to hide. So what kind of advice do you have for those badass single people who are like, I'm doing my thing and I am happy? Yes, no, Valentine's Day was always my one of my favorite times of the year, um, single or dating or not. I mean, yeah, that's just the time that I would get together with my friends and we would go out and just be almost like a Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? What did you accomplish this year? And if someone was like, you know, I, next year I don't want to be sitting here with you girls. I want to be out on a date somewhere. Then I would say, all right, let's put your, your plan together. Let's do it. And I'd hold them accountable. It's similar to a, a, they call me like a personal trainer because I know how to go to the gym and how to work out and what I need to eat. I don't always do it. And if I don't do it, you can tell. So it's really that accountability to say, I'm going to put this plan together and I'm going to work the plan. And if you're going to go out, just again, celebrate who you are. We have, it's just keeping that positive attitude. We're so lucky to be here. And just if you have something even that you're a little bit passionate about in life, if it's work or painting or whatever it is, just be happy with the things that you have. And if you want something, go get it, set your goal, create your plan and go get it. I love that. And you know what? I think that even if you are thinking about dating or you've had bad experiences, I feel like just going through the process of figuring out how to sell yourself, how to brand yourself, how to put yourself out there is good for more than just dating. So if people are listening to this and they're like, I love everything Tracy is saying because it's so true and they want to get started on this personal brand for themselves, how to sell themselves, especially that elevator pitch. So what advice do you have for people when it comes to speaking about themselves? Because a lot of people are like oh I hate sharing what I do for a living like how do we tell people how to get their act together when it comes to getting better at talking about themselves well just be interesting so you can if someone asks you the question oh what do you do you can answer it but what you need to do is pivot and talk about something that you do want to talk about you don't have to talk about what that person wants what they ask you about you can turn any question into what you want it to be so I would say Get your, everyone loves random facts. You know, those are the great icebreakers. So always have one or two random facts ready to go and find a way to just put them into the conversation. So people will say to me, oh, well, what do you do? And I'll say, oh, well, I'm a brand strategist. You know, I really love doing that. I, I like working really hard um, because, you know, just inherently, I, I just like to, to be where everything is. I like to be in the action. For instance, you know, I never missed a day of school from kindergarten through high school. I had perfect attendance. Oh, my you know, God. That's crazy. <laughs> Right. And so it's, it's like a, like a nerdy award that I was embarrassed to get when I was a kid, but now it's indicative of who I am. It helped me get jobs because people realized I was going to be there every single day. I was going to do what they needed to do. And boom, I'm talking about work. There's, I'm still telling, answering their question, but I'm telling it to them with that has an interesting spin to it that hopefully will 
you'll get them also the small talk questions and now spin off. So they'll say, oh my gosh, I skip school all the time. And maybe they go off and tell you a story about something that you can really then start to get beyond that small talk. Wait, I love that because if you said that to me, I wouldn't even remember what you said before that. I'd be like, tell me everything, you know? So that's that's genius, and I love that. Tracy, this has been such invaluable advice, and we appreciate it so much. I want to end this interview like we end them all. Fill in the blank. You're not getting any younger, so... Build a brand that allows you to get everything you want in life. I love you. I want to be your best friend. Seriously. That's how my, my man is. I'm going to like put this on my vision board. I want to be your best friend. Tracy, please tell our listeners where they can find out more about you and your book. On socials, I'm just at Tracy Hitz, T-R-A-C-I-E-H-I-T-Z. And my website is hitsandbranding.com. Amazing, Tracy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.